Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Jochem. Okay gang, so if you're coming from the first resonance video, then we have a little bit of a foundation. We have a little bit of a base when it comes to resonance. We know that resonance just merely shows how electrons can move across a structure, but we're not adding or subtracting anything, right? We're just showing how these electrons can move freely if they're in a situation where that's possible, right? We're just showing how these electrons can be delocalized, meaning they're not stuck where they are. They're actually, in actuality, when we draw something like this on flat paper, there's actually movement of electrons and this structure, which happens to be acetic acid here, never just looks like this. In fact, right, and if I am going to show resonance, I'm going to draw a resonance hybrid, right? I will draw my double head, my double sided arrow saying, this is a resonance structure, but now I'm going to show, illustrate some electron moves to then draw another resonance structure. And I can do that because if I look at my situation right here, I see this carbon right here. And what I could do, for example, is take these uh, this electron pair with oxygen. I could use a double-sided arrow to show this lone pair will then become a bond, right? Oxygen will supply both of the electrons to form a double bond that will be drawn right here. Um, that's not how you actually show that. I just wanted to show that the dotted line is where the bond is going. But I have to stop because if I do nothing, this carbon will break the octet rule with one, two, three, four, five bonds. So what I can do is I can then just take one of these bonds up here and just completely give the two electrons in this bond up to oxygen. And again, since I'm moving two electrons, I'm using a double-headed arrow and the resulting structure looks like this. Didn't change anything over here. Double bond over here. Oxygen with one lone pair now, and that's still that bond to hydrogen. Bond up top with three lone pairs. Do your formal charges, right? Oxygen is controlling one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It comes from the sixth column of the periodic table. This is a minus one charge. And down here, we have a little bit of the opposite. One, two, three, four, five. We have six minus five. We actually have a plus charge right here. So again, with resonance, we never just look like this structure. We never just look like this structure. We're going to look like a summation, an average, if you will, of all of the resonance hybrids, right? This is a hybrid and this is a hybrid. However, right, you're probably thinking, Joe, we've already done this. You're absolutely right. But what I wanna talk about in this video is that not all hybrids are created equal. Not sure why I said not, but not all hybrids are created equal, right? You could have four resonance hybrids, but some can be better than others. And you know, you can evaluate that, right, depending on if someone does, you know, if one atom doesn't have a full octet, or if one hybrid forces a charge on an atom that may not be the best candidate to support that charge. So this video is gonna be about, because uh, obviously resonance is a theme throughout organic chemistry, you need to be an all-star at it. And don't worry, you will get there, and I, it just takes practice and practice. But one thing we need to cover is on an exam, one question you can be asked is, given, you know, draw the resonance hybrids for a given structure, and then identify the major contributor to the overall hybrid, or you know, identify the minor contributor to the overall hybrid. We're gonna talk about the rules of you know, the checklist that you look at as far as how you, you know, look at a resonance hybrid and say this is a good one or this is a bad one, and we'll do some examples. So one second, I'm gonna clean this up, we're gonna talk about the rules, we're gonna do some examples, and then we'll call it a video. Okay gang, so let's talk some guidelines when looking at resonance hybrids these are what are going to help you determine if something is good, you know, a good hybrid or a bad hybrid. Okay, so the three golden rules, right? The three golden guidelines. So when you're looking at a resonance hybrid, right? You know, these are all written to maybe see if something is good, right? But the, if you just take them as the opposite, then that would be, you know, a bad resonance hybrid. So the most important, oh, this goes from most important to least important, right? So this, this is, this is uh, I'll say importance. You absolutely, your main objective above all else is to try to get everyone to have an octet in your structure, right? If everyone has eight electrons and, you know, even if there's some blemish as far as rules two and three go in a given resonance structure, that one will reign supreme because we need to make our atoms happy. They need to have a full octet, right? Or they would like to have a full octet, I should say. Okay, number two, if you're going to have charges in your resonance hybrid, your resonance structure, you want to see, you know, a better structure will put the charges on atoms that can handle more effectively. A good example of that would be if you could put a negative charge on nitrogen or carbon, 
clearly the resonance structure, you know, if everything else, holding everything else the same, the resonance structure that's gonna put a negative charge on nitrogen will be better, a better overall hybrid contribute more to the overall, you know, what the structure looks like because nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, right? So that's one example of what I'm talking about. And last but not least, if you are gonna have multiple charges in a structure, right, if you're going to have a positive and a negative, right, I'm not talking about positive, positive, negative, negative. I'm saying if you have multiple charges in a structure and they are opposite, right, because of, you know, uh, opposites, opposite charges attracting one another, you want to see if you can co-locate them. You want to see if you can make them neighbors or very close to one another, okay? Right, this is all nice words, but everything is better seen in an example, so let me erase this. We'll do two examples that hits on each one of these, and then we will call it a video. Okay, gang, let's take our first example and look at carbon monoxide. So before we get drawing with resonance at all, we need a Lewis dot structure first. So we're gonna lean back on our Lewis dot structure drawing abilities, and I'm sure you're being, uh, you know, you're pros at them by now, but I'm gonna go with the foolproof method just to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, so we need our total number of electrons. So carbon brings four to the table, right? Because carbon is in the fourth column of the periodic table, so four valence electrons. Oxygen brings six, okay? So we have 10 electrons total that we're working with. Hopefully that math will be the hardest part of this problem. Okay, so obviously the skeletal structure is pretty simple. This is what we are working with. So we only have eight more electrons to work with, right? Since I connected these two with a bond and that bond represents two electrons. So what I could do first is just give carbon and oxygen full octets, right? Because two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. I'm probably gonna be over my electron limit, but let's count. Yeah, we got eight right here, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Definitely too many. We need to consolidate lone pairs to bonds. So what I can do first, eliminate a lone pair from each, make a double bond. I'm still gonna be over, but let's count. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Let's do it one more time. There we go. Before I do anything, I need to make sure I draw my formal charges. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 10, well, 10. And then for carbon, one, two, three, four, five. Carbon comes in with four. We got five in carbon's control. That gives carbon a negative charge. And one, two, three, four, five. Oxygen comes in with six. In control of five, that gives us a plus one. This is a structure, okay? So now that we've actually gotten a base, let's see if we can draw resonance here. And the answer is yes. So what we can do, right? Let's obviously we need to draw our double-sided arrow like this that says, hey, look at us. We're drawing resonance. We're going from this structure to another structure, and then now we need to draw an arrow or arrows to show what we are actually going to do here. So what can we do? Well, I hope this is your mindset. Oxygen is electronegative, right? So in this structure, is it maybe ideal that oxygen has a positive charge? Probably not. Let's see what happens if we take one of these bonds and move it to oxygen to hopefully alleviate that negative charge. So we're gonna take one of the bonds in the triple bond and completely give it to oxygen. So oxygen is getting another lone pair and then we'll have a double bond left between the carbon and the oxygen. Okay, so now let's pause and take a look. So we still have two, four, six, eight, ten 10 electrons, right? So we have 10 electrons total with, within our quota. And let's look at formal charges. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oxygen is zero and is neutral. That looks great. But now let's look at carbon. One, two, three, four. And that looks great too. However, even though electronically we are neutral here, we actually just broke the first guideline for good resonance hybrids, right? If, even though we look neutral here and that seems like a great thing, and ideally you want no charges in your structure because you just want you know, to be electronically neutral, this, there's no full octet for that carbon, no full octet. So I like this carbon monoxide resonance example, and I can put this in brackets as well. You should bracket your resonance structures, I often forget. Um, so the one thing with carbon monoxide is that even though this structure right here is electronically neutral, carbon does not have a full octet. So if we were gonna pick between which what does carbon monoxide look like most of the time? This hybrid or this hybrid? We can't give certain percentages, but we can confidently say this structure right here is the major 
contributor to the hybrid, the overall resonance hybrid, major contributor to overall resonance hybrid. And I say overall hybrid gang because, right, we don't just look like this all the time. We don't look like this all the time. We look like a blending of the two. But since this is a better resonance structure because of the fact that we have full octets on both atoms involved as opposed to over here, we look like this structure most of the time in that final hybrid, okay? So that's, this is the type of problems you'll see. You'll, you'll get a situation, you'll have to draw a structure, you'll have to draw the resonance, and then you'll be put to the test. And you'll have to use those three guidelines we talked about. Full octet, who's bearing the charge, is that the, like, you know, which atom is bearing charges, is that the best person for the job? And if you have multiple charges, are they co-located near each other? And the other thing is too, you know, we do have opposite charges next door to each other. We have a positive and a negative, a yin and a yang. So electronically, they are keeping each other happy, right? Because we do have multiple charges, but they're right next door to each other. Okay, so I have one more example. I think it's a little bit more interesting than this. So we're gonna erase this, toss the example up, and then call it a video. Okay, gang, let's rip this last example and call it quits for resonance, even though we're using it all throughout OCHEM. Okay, so in this example, gang, we're gonna look at diazomethane. Not a you know thing you need to know, like, oh, this is diazomethane. It's just a common name for a structure, so thought I'd include it for fun, because this is fun. So if we take a look at this, right, we are going to have to draw resonance. That's what we're doing in this video. So what we need to do first is draw the Lewis dot structure, right? So let's you know, figure out how many electrons we're working with. So we have from hydrogen, two electrons, because there's two of them, for carbon, just one carbon, so we have four electrons, and we have two nitrogens from the fifth column. So that means we have 10 electrons from those nitrogens. All together, our grand electronic total is 16 electrons. Cool, that's our budget. So. As you can tell from the structure right there, I even went ahead and this is what the skeleton of the structure is gonna look like. So let's start you know, bonding everybody together and seeing what we got. So obviously carbon is gonna be just single bonded to these hydrogens, right? Because hydrogen only has that one S shell, right? And to, you know, for uh, hydrogen to have a full octet, we just need two electrons in that shell. So one bond, two electrons, both hydrogens are set and good to go. So let's just even connect these together and then let's just lone pair everybody up. We're definitely over, but let's count. You have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Too many electrons. We're, we have four too many, so we need to make two double bonds, right? You know, to get uh, back to 16. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put one here and one here, because why not? So I'll erase this. And then I will erase a pair right here. Okay, so now we need to do formal charges before we get to resonance. So if we take a look here, one, two, three, four, carbon neutral. That's good. Let's look at nitrogen. One, two, three, four, right? We come from the fifth column with nitrogen. As a result, we have a plus because it's five minus four. That's how we get that. Now let's look at the nitrogen over here. One, two, three, four, five, six opposite thing we got going on. Nitrogen comes in with five, nitrogen's in control of six, so we actually have a minus charge, whoop, I don't even know what I was doing there. Minus charge right here. Okay, this is a valid Lewis dot structure. Now let's see if we can draw resonance, look at the two structures, because there are two here, and to see if we can say one is better than the other, so therefore we'd say one's a major contributor to the overall hybrid, or and, you know, conversely one's a minor contributor to the overall hybrid. I will be a good organic citizen and I will bracket this structure, okay? Remember, also, double-headed arrow to say, hey, look at me, I'm drawing resonance. I'm gonna go from this structure. I'm gonna draw another resonance hybrid just because I'm moving electrons around. I'm not creating bonds or you know, taking any away. I will open this bracket. So let's think about what we can do. So what we can do, actually, is we can move electrons from this negative nitrogen towards this positive nitrogen. This will become, this will be a lone pair going to be a triple bond. Now we need to do something or else we're gonna break the octet rule at this nitrogen because what would then be three bonds here, four or five, that nitrogen will have too many bonds. So what we can do is we can actually take one of these bonds that carbon and nitrogen are sharing and bounce it up as a lone pair on carbon. I hope that makes sense. Let me make this arrow a little bit better. And remember we're using double-headed arrows because in each instance, two electrons exist in this bond. I'm moving them to carbon 
Two electrons are a lone pair right here. I'm moving them to be a bond between nitrogen and nitrogen. So I didn't touch anything in hydrogen land. This carbon now has an electron pair right here. We have just a single bond here. Whoop, we're mixing too many colors. The nice part about resonance is once you do the hard critical thinking, you're just following whatever arrows you drew. And then we have a triple bond right here. And just the one lone pair right here. Whoa, too close together. Close the bracket. That bracket is far away too small. Let's make an equally sized bracket. That's good enough. <laughs> Not great, but okay. All right, so let's do formal charges because the thing is in resonance, whatever you start with, right, we're net neutral, we should be net neutral over here. Okay, so let's look at this nitrogen right here. This nitrogen comes in from the fifth column and it's in control of one, two, three, four, five. This nitrogen is neutral. Let's take a look at this nitrogen. One, two, three, four. It is still positive, and that makes sense because it has four bonds here. It has four bonds here. It's the same. Now let's look at this carbon. This should be negative, right? This should check out. Carbon comes from the fourth column. One, two, three, four, five, and exactly right, we are minus one. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's compare these two resonance hybrids and see if one contributes a little bit more to the overall hybrid. So. The one thing that varies, we still have, we, we do have two charges and they are next door to each other. So rule three is good, right? Two charges, they're opposite and they're close to one another. Now, the thing that's different, this nitrogen still bears a positive in both scenarios, but who bears the negative charge? It changes. We have a nitrogen versus carbon scenario. And what's gonna be the deal breaker here is you have to ask the question, the age old question, does nitrogen handle negativity better than carbon? And that comes down to electronegativity, and the answer is yes. Nitrogen is more comfortable with this negative charge, so this structure is, you know, more stable. Therefore, it contributes more to the overall uh, resonance hybrid. So, if someone asked you to identify the major and minor contributors to the overall hybrid, you would say this is the major, this is the minor. So, as opposed to the carbon dioxide example, everyone had a full octet throughout. The deal breaker was who bare charge. Right, that was what, you know, drew the line in the sand, okay? Gang, I think by this point you're probably resonanced out, but if you have anything left in the tank, I have a worksheet I very much like, and it's about, you know, it's, you know, drawing resonance. I think they're non-trivial resonance structures to draw, and you are asked to identify, you know, there are more than two as well, which is good, and then you have to identify, um, you know, the major uh, contributor to the overall hybrid. So it practices exactly what you just went through, right? You're going to need to rely on those three guidelines. So I would highly recommend that you do that worksheet. So thank you again for liking and hopefully subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next video.